We all know how to use if else statements in our code, but I want to show you how you can clean up your code drastically just by dropping the else statement and only using if. And my example is going to be in JavaScript, but really this applies to a lot of different languages. So let's pretend we're building an express server in JavaScript where a user is going to log in at one of the endpoints and we'll assume that they sent the username and the password in the request body. And the first thing we probably want to do is check to see if they actually sent a username and a password. So we'll see if these actually have values in them. And if they do, we can continue and try and get the user from the database and then check to see if their password is valid. If they didn't supply a username and password, probably need an else statement to say, uh, you know, enter a username and password, right? Send them back a, a message there. But if they did submit a username and password, now we need to check if that user actually exists in the database. So let's go grab the user from the database. Let's just assume we have a function called get user that accepts a username. Uh, and this would be an async function now. So if that user exists in the database, great, we can now continue and check the password. Uh, but if they don't, again, we probably need to say uh, username incorrect because that user just doesn't exist in the database. But if we do have the user, then we can check if the password is correct. And we probably used bcrypt to hash the passwords. So we use it now to compare the passwords. And I don't remember the order here. I think it's the hashed version of the password. So the one coming from the database and the plain text version. And we can use async await here again. Okay, so if the passwords match, if they're the same, then awesome, uh, we're done, uh, user is logged in, maybe we uh, make a, a cookie or do something with a JWT, I don't care, whatever. But if they aren't the same, then we need to tell the user um, password incorrect. And you know, in most applications, we'll probably actually do the same thing here, username or password incorrect. So there we go. There is the logic to log a user in to my fake application here. And this is kind of a little bit messy for a few different reasons. The first thing to know is that each if statement is checking for a valid case. So we can only continue if there is a username and password. We can only continue if the user exists in the database. We can only continue if the passwords match. So each one we're checking to make sure that we're in a valid state. And if we're in an invalid state, we need to handle that with some sort of error handling code. So if I look this if statement, the corresponding else, which is all the way down here, is the error handling code. When I check to see if the user exists in the database, if I wanna check the error handling code here, I have to find the matching else, it's down here, and there it is. And only when I get to all the successful cases, only when we get truthy values in all of the if statements, do we get to the successful code. So the success code is kind of difficult to find. It's in the middle here. It's the most indented and it's just kind of hard to follow and read and it doesn't look very good. So when we have a bunch of if statements like this, just checking for the valid cases, instead of using if statements, we should use guard statements. Not God, guard, I have an accent. So what that means is that instead of checking for the valid case, we flip this and check for the invalid case. So instead of checking for a username and a password, I'm gonna flip this and say, if there is not a username or there is not a password, then I'm gonna handle that error case. So I'm gonna bring this rec.send right up to the top here. And if this error case is met, if I get into this if statement, I don't wanna continue running the rest of the code. I need to stop right here and just end the function. So if we're inside a function and we need to end the function, we can just write a return statement, just return, stop, don't continue doing anything else. If I don't have a username and password, just don't do anything else in this function. And now I can remove this else statement from down here. And then we can continue doing this. So the next thing I'm gonna try and do is grab that user. Then if there is not a user, I'm gonna send this error message, oops, and immediately return again. So what we're starting to see here is that we're checking for the invalid case. Then we handle 
that case immediately and return. And we check for another invalid case, handle it immediately and return. So if we keep going down the function here, we know that we're going into the valid case where there is a username and password that is a valid user. And we just have one more here. So let's invert this. If they are not the same password, uh, then I'm gonna run this, return, indent this a little bit nicer. Oh, actually twice. Maybe add a bit of spacing and clean up all of these else's here that I didn't clean up before. And there is the code without using else statements. Now we have the code that handles the invalid case right next to the if statement that checks for that case. And if I want to see the successful case when everything is good, when everything is valid, I just scroll to the bottom of the function. Since we're returning every time something is invalid, the valid final step where the user is logged in and we do something with a cookie or a JSON web token or whatever, that's always going to be at the bottom of the function. So if we're always consistent and write our code without those else statements, then we'll end up always knowing where our success case is. It's always at the bottom of the function and it's really easy to find where we're handling the invalid cases. And this example is obviously in JavaScript, but this concept applies to other languages and other languages even have different constructs to deal with this. So for example, in the Swift programming language, instead of using an if statement, I'll actually write a guard statement. I'll use the word guard. And if this was Swift, it would look uh, a little something like this where we'd actually still have an else because a guard is accompanied by an else in that language we're actually forced to return or throw or end our program execution within a guard statement so it does an extra check for us there so this is a really simple idea but it can lead to much cleaner much easier to read and debug code which is just a win for every programmer if you liked this video please leave a comment let me know if you want me to cover any other topics and make sure you subscribe so you get notified the next time i publish a video yeah. mm. and i'm still here with who i started with not your average artist i am not the one to bargain